Hi, and welcome back to Dev Explaining channel. I recently did a Java 17 uh, release video and it got kind of good uh, response and uh, I got some extra questions as well. So I decided that, uh, sure, I could uh, do some series of, of the new features, a deep dive into what you have available now since uh, Java 17 is kind of a big deal. So in today's video, I will start with uh, a few things. One is that I will show you quickly uh, how I set up my Java in my machine, what are your good options right now. I have made another video uh, on that earlier, and that's still pretty good, but somewhat outdated now because some changes have happened. Um, so I'll just include here the fixes for that, and also some of my thoughts on the IDEs. I try to be compact with those because the uh, actual thing today is going to be records. But let's dive into the code right now. So Java 17, uh, first of all, uh, you need to be running it. And my favorite way to install it is SDK man, because uh, then I get to run Java uh, versions like 8, 11, and 17, and I always just choose which I want to do. So my recommendation is to stay up to date with Java. And of course, one way to do that would be uh, to sometimes uh, take a little bit of time and run a little bit of code with the new one. And to do that, it's very convenient that you can run multiple versions of Java. So if, if I say uh, SDK list Java, you can see which ones I have installed. So uh, I have done some videos on Adopt Open JDK. As you can see, there's no version 17. That's because it's migrated under another name now. So if you are a big fan of those, uh, you need to be looking uh, elsewhere. That will become clear shortly. But uh, I'm running version 16 and 15 and 8 here, so I can just swap uh, between those at any point. We have other awesome versions of Java. As you can see, we have Amazon Coreto um, staying very up to date. We have version 17 available right now. We have um, OpenJDK somewhere. Sorry, missed it here. Java Net, it's under Java Net. So JavaNet is like OpenJDK, and as you can see, we have 17 and I have installed it already. Uh, we actually have already 18, so the train is definitely not stopping. But I, I'm thinking I might pause a bit and not do crazy videos on the, these minor versions right now, because there is a, 17 is a good platform where I can stop for a bit and just give you all the goodies that have become available after you update from Java 11. And I think that's, uh, that's a good way to treat things. So I'll just combine all the good stuff you have available now and do some uh, kind of uh, detailed videos on those. And today you will get records, okay? So I'm not going to be crazily running here yet, at least. Let's stick to 17 for a bit. But uh, I digress. So 17 uh, OpenJDK is a good option. Uh, it will carry you for your any experimentation and, uh, and uh, anything else nicely as with the Adopt Open JDK. Uh, but I also mentioned that Adopt Open JDK has migrated. It's now now under Eclipse Temurin. So uh, you can also install this one if you want to keep up the Adopt Open JDK packaging. Um, I've done earlier a video on Java versions and it can be a confusing subject that but for for experimentation and development you will be fine with most, most of these. So the, the differences are mostly about kind of advanced uh, things like uh, garbage collection support and, and uh, some uh, debugging support, uh, tooling support, and then uh, your support model. So do you want to get all the security patches uh, for years from now? Then you, then you want to kind of take a, a little bit closer look. Uh, Oracle is having also their Java so they uh, released a new licensing model that allows you to get their JDK and uh, run it for development and also for production and also for commercial uses. There is some caveat, so perhaps I should do another video on that as well. But there's now a kind of pre-Oracle uh, supported Java option as well. And uh, some of my buddies have been pushing Zulu quite a lot, so commercial offering. but. Uh, awesome support, a lot of good good stuff there as well, worth taking a look. So as you can see, we have many, many options. What are we going to use today? 
Well, how about just good old open JDK version 17? I think that's good enough for me. Today, I could use Temurin as well. Either one is fine. And then, um, then uh, we can see the version, and then we have the JShell tool, which is awesome. Uh, your REPL, where you can play with the new features, and you can see how they work. But that, uh, sorry, that brings me to the next point, which is uh, IDE. So how about some IDE goodness? I've done another video on the IDEs, and really worth uh, checking that one up. Uh, it's not so much outdated, except that all the IDs I mentioned now have uh, better support for Java 17. Um, so that's very good news. So for example, uh, VS Code that I'm running right now uh, gracefully handles Java 17 records or Java 16 records. So uh, you just need to be running Java 17 and you get all that goodness. Um, I'm also quite fond of IntelliJ IDEA IDE. Uh, that's an awesome editor, uh, especially if you use the Ultimate Edition with a license fee. Uh, IntelliJ is able to take a look at your code, and if they see something that could be done be better with Java 17, they will recommend it. Uh, I might actually make a video a VS Code against uh, IntelliJ. Again, let me know in the comment section if you would like to see that. I might be up to making that video as well. But let's just say that both are good. I'm getting recently a lot of questions, which ID is good for big projects or Bob projects. And I would recommend either one. There is actually more good candidates, but personally, I will be most of the time using one of these two editors. So VS Code or IntelliJ, both awesome tools. They will, they will handle anything you throw to them nicely. Okay. So let's go into records. I have all set up, ready to run some records goodness. So uh, I've been decently dabbling a little bit with cryptos. Uh, there might be a crypto mining related video coming up. Don't be worried, I'm not going to sell anything there. It's just my hobby. Hobby to do some, some dabbling there. And I've been dealing with altcoins that are not listed in major exchanges, so they have obscure APIs where I need to actually write some tooling. And I have written some tooling for myself that will go to those APIs and, and fetch some price information and then store it in CSV so I get some historical records and alert me when I have become rich, for example. So uh, I've been done those in Python and in Java. And uh, the data I'm dealing with is like this, not really that important for the case I'm making here. It could be anything. You could be doing like people, it could be products, it could be financial records, whatever you, you do. I just need to have some data as an example, and I have it here. So we have timestamps, we have pricing information, etc. Okay, so let's define a model for that. And here I have old school class crypto ticker. This is how I would roll in 1995. And I'm betting. As I'm doing this video, there is like 1,000 Java coders right now doing the same thing for some data model. So you do your class, you do your private fields, and then you are like, okay, I need more. So what, what I need? Well, constructor is nice to have because when I have, um, let's use this one and generate um, constructors. So when I have data, it's nice to put the data in, and many people prefer to do it through the constructor. So I create my object, and then I have all the goodness uh, within it. Now, we cannot access it very well yet, but let's play with this a bit. So <clears throat> just by having the constructors in place, I'm able to create a few instances uh, populated with data. What data I have, by the way? Well, ticker name. Average price, highest price, lowest price, open price, timestamp when this was done, and then I have volume, how much is being traded. This could be stock tickers as well, doesn't really matter. It's the same approach. And as I said, if you are not into stocks or cry cryptos, if that's nowhere near what you are doing, then you are probably doing products, prices, um, people, or, or then, then you get struck by GDPR. 
So whatever you have, you always have some data and you, you typically at some point end up modeling it in some kind of object or structure. In Java, it might look something like this, yeah. So I have a bit of code here and uh, Java gives you some default implementations for your code. This is old, old, old school. I'm just going to show this before I show you the records. But Java lets you do quite a lot already with this kind of code and I can do run and get really bad results because Java check this out and the default to string, sorry to say, is like this. It's not very, very good. Uh, default hash code is based, uh, I think, on memory location or something. And uh, it means that if I print the hash code for two tickers, I get probably different results. Yep, here we go. And uh, they are not the same. So I'm calling equals function because I can, I have it. But the default implementation is checking if it's the same instance in same memory location. And in this case, it's not ticker one, ticker two are not the same object in same instance. They are two different instances with identical data. So most of the time you would like them to be equal. So I just uh, made my point that uh, if you do your object like this, it's not enough. If you put it in any, um, any data structures, uh, like and then you want to compare if you have duplicates for example it's going to be horribly wrong so let's fix things old school way first old school way would be to generate more code generate getters and setters because that's the way we roll in 1995 yeah get something set set something then we generate two string and then we generate uh, equals and hash code and more if you like, but it's already getting quite heavy. So that's a lot of code. Uh, this is uh, how Java originally intended you to do the object. So uh, some of these actually came along along the way, but I think many of this is quite 1995 Java. So we have a constructor to create the item, then accessors, mutators to access it. You might want to customize these or not, but you have some defaults here. And then we have the two string default implementation and hash code default implementation. If you, you could argue that if you auto generate it, it's not uh, a lot of time. But many people make the mistake of customizing these and then it gets really funky. Uh, then you have to actually take a better look in these and, and maintain these. And even if you just auto generate these, it's still a lot of clutter. It's hiding the kind of beautiful things. But with the auto-generated code, it's actually working a little bit better now. So my two string is a bit better. Um, hash codes are generated based on the content and they are the same. So the functionality is there, but the code uh, representation is horrible. So let's, let's drop that crap. I'm going to be gentle and first uh, comment that out. Okay. So how about some first dose of Java 17 goodness? Records. Record crypto ticker. And uh, then we have some fields, hopefully, probably. And then we have potential to customize it. I'm not going to customize anything today because that would be too long a video. But let me know if you like to like, like me to do a video on record customization, a really deep dive. Um, but be warned that my first first uh, sentence in that video would be, please don't. Because 99% of the time, or at least 90% of the time, customization will only make it worse and you don't, don't really need it. There is some cases where it's useful. But I'm not going to do that today. So for today, I just want to show how awesome they are if, if, you, if you buy that and you want to go deeper, then let's do that video at some other time and then let me know. Then I'll make it. But for now, um, this is all I need today. So that's my record. Record crypto ticker. Here are my fields and their types. And let's not customize. It's done. My ID is quite happy with that because the extensions are now supporting the late feature, so VS Code is ready for it. Um, IntelliJ IDE is even more ready for it. 
So actually, if you do the old old school way, it's going to say, hmm, have you heard about this thing called record that might make your life like 1000% better? But you can do it manually like this, quite easy. So how, do, how does the code work now? Well, the code works in an awesome way. It's not identical results, but it's quite similar results. So the two string method happens to be quite the same that what, uh, what VS Code ID happened to generate for me. And the cool thing is that now it's also the same that your neighbor is doing with a separate ID. The code generated versions of these were always different, but now it's part of the standard. So you get identical unless you customize. So they are the same, yeah. Hash codes are based on the content, so they are the same. And the two string makes sense. And it's always going to be the same. So for the records, I love them. Quite an easy upgrade. It's a big deal for me. Uh, you might have been using the IDs quite powerfully generating the code. But why, why do that? As I said, some weak points include that each ID does a little bit different code generation. Uh, if you generate the code and customize, you will be in hell. And, uh, and uh, that would be my main points. And why do it? There is a lot of kind of clutter that you really don't need to see or want to see most of the time. And uh, some people have been using Lombok. And Lombok has been an awesome project. But again, now time has caught up. We are at Java 17, so why, why not just do records? Records are awesome. I haven't encountered a single kind of a down, downfall or any, any bad sides to records, at least yet. There is some cases with the extra libraries where they are not up to speed yet, but in that case, just update the libraries, uh, uh, do a merge request to make them aware of records. So life, life will get a lot, lot, lot better. Um, if you are really into records, uh, request a deep dive and I will do it. How to customize them, how it looks like in bytecode level, for example, might be good topics. But I'm really not going to do that unless I see that there is interest for it, because I have so many other Java 17 related easy pickings to cover before that. Um, but uh, as, as for now, I see the video is already pretty long, but I also covered some of the stuff that I really didn't feel like doing a new video. So, so how to install Java in 2021? You got that, uh, which Java version to do, which Java version is a good one. Uh, plenty of choices there, plenty of good choices. So don't sweat about it, but use, uh, use the te Temurin or OpenJDK or any, any of the others if you feel like that. And uh, also ID support, it's there. It's a good support. I might encounter kind of hiccups, probably with the VS code uh, later along the way, but it's already pretty good and uh, any, any hiccups will be fixed probably before I get, get to make a video on them. So IDs are good, they are ready for it. Uh, let, let's rock the Java 17. And there is no excuse not to run Java 17, even if your main project is still in Java 8. Just set up an environment where you can experiment with them all. Or you can also use Docker. I've, I've done videos on Docker and Java and just safely run Java 17 inside Docker and play with it. Use JShell uh, to experiment with the new features and your life will be like a thousand times better. Thanks for watching. Be active supporter. Subscribe to channel. Click those like buttons. Spread the links. Drop some comments. Do all that and my channel will grow and it will guarantee good stuff in the future as well. And thanks for all the support so far. It's carried me this far, and uh, I'm kind of pumped up to do more Java 17 uh, detail videos in the future. Next one is going to be about the hidden goodies in Java 16 and 17, uh, and it's more like a commentary, but it's going to be good. So stay tuned. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.